This show is sponsored by Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. Go to greenchef.com slash poundcast60 and use the code poundcast60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash poundcast60 and use code pound si- sorry, poundcast60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. That's right. Check this out, Brent. Our show is also brought to you by lvjco.com. That is the home of Louisville Vegan Jerky. We're talking about General Tso's, which is now available, which is now a forever flavor. Hmm. Shelby Park, Honey Barbecue, the list goes on. Cowboy Steak. Chipo- Smoky Cherry- Carolina Barbecue. Cherry Chipotle. I'm on the site right now, Brent. There's so many options. Maple Bacon. Uh, Buffalo Dale. Buffalo Dale's good. And they got these small batch flavors. Man Man Teriyaki. Uh, Kung Pao, sweet chili garlic. Um, cow- you said cowboy steak? hmm <laughs> Okay, my mouth is watering just doing this right now. So go to lvjco.com and use the code word POUNDCAST to get 20% off your entire order. This stuff is bagged in the United States. It has a shelf life of nine months. And, uh, uh, yeah, this is plant. It's all plant-based, okay? So, um... What else do you want me to do here? What else What else can I say about Louisville Vegan Jerky? LVJCo.com. Use the code, the, pound, the code word POUNDCAST. 20% off. And if you don't want to get it on a website, you can go to Whole Foods or Sprouts or wherever you find delicious snacks. This show is also sponsored by you. You. Pound, it's called Patreon.com <laughs> slash... Poundcast. That's right. We have a Patreon page. And that's what really keeps this show afloat. Because listeners and viewers like you sign up for our Patreon. And when they do that, they get access to a bonus episode, a bonus extended episode of every single episode. Today we have Whitmer Thomas on the show. But afterwards, we kept talking it was with just, me and Brent and for another 30 minutes. And it was, this was a good, un, we call it unzipped. It was a good unzipped. Mm-hmm. We had some, we get some good impressions. We got Sylvester Stallone out. in there and Mike from Breaking Bad and all these things. And it's fun. There's some funny expressions. We got some good stuff in that. It was actually probably one of the best unzips. Yeah, we, I tested out a new joke and Brent punched it up. We, uh, we did a few. We built on a few yeah, uh, jokes here. I, I um, was like, uh, went through my joke list. I think, I want to say this is one of the best ones this we've had in a while. So you definitely want to kind of check yeah, that so out. Yeah, so the only way to do that is go to patreon.com slash poundcast. And to, on today's show, besides Whitmer oh, Thomas, we also have, I just want to give a quick shout out to Clay Tatum, because he's on the show too. The director of the film, The Civil Dead, which is in theaters now, and it's gonna be a VOD video on demand. So check out their film starring Whitmer Thomas. And Clay. And Clay. Written by both. Written by both. And let me say that um, about the unzip stuff, uh, Patreon, you get the full thing, No ad, pretty much no ads. Pretty much no ads. So, and you get them a day, a couple days earlier. And a couple days earlier. Yeah. So you got sneak, you get early access, and you have access to all the old and all the, the, old. Ca- the catalog that goes oh, and loads that spans of, back loads of content. And if I could compile all the golden moments that we've had on the show, boy oh boy, that would take a long time. That would take too much time. Yeah. Now you can check out the show on um, YouTube if you want to watch things. Uh, YouTube.com/slash/thepoundcast. We are being filmed right now, uh-huh. and we're on social media. Uh, Instagram is the Poundcast, and so is TikTok, correct? Yeah. That's right. And I, I, one more quick announcement. Two at Crew, we're doing a live Two at Crew show March 7th at Dynasty Typewriter. Um, if you Google Dynasty Typewriter, if you don't live in L.A., you can watch the show. It's going to be streaming. Uh, so you can get a ticket for that. And, I, <laughs> and I'll be over at the Cannon Beach Comedy Festival... On March seventeenth, that's St. Patrick's Day, I think, right? And that is, and it's uh, that's a Friday. I'll be doing the Friday show in Cannon Beach, Oregon, which is um, about an hour and a half or so away from Portland. So get your cars gassed up and get ready. To check out Brent, and then then watch my show too. Well, or, or, the, or, it's March seventh. That's March seven. My this thing is on March seventeen. I'm True. Saying. So you can do both <laughs> easily. Um, okay, um, so 
I think that's about it. Yeah, you know, get on, we'll get Whitmer out here and we'll talk to him. Yeah, we'll talk to Whitmer and then eventually talk to Clay as well. And uh, Sounds great. Do we have a hey, new you remix know from... We have a new remix from you have to look that Christina up. Chubb. That's right. You're That's right. We right. do. We do. We do. Yeah. Christina Chubb. Yeah, we do. That's right. You know mm-hmm. what? Let's roll the clip and, and uh, see what happens. Okay. Let's, let's bring Whitmer out here. Roll the clip. Okay. All right. I'm really feeling this group. We are here in studio with the Alabama legend, the Gulf Shores king of skateboarding, the golden boy, the big baby. <laughs> Whitmer Thomas, here he is. Thanks for having me, y'all. Appreciate it. We've been trying to book this for centuries, and we finally got you on. Well, you've been on before. Well, it's it's a real honor, and yeah, last time I was on, I was on uh, I was on Zoom or something on my phone in the car. Oh. Remember, y'all remember this during lo- hardcore lockdown? That was a lockdown. I kind of forgot about it, to be honest. Yeah. Where were you it driving? Was, it was for a forgettable time. I was driving my Subaru Outback 2020, basically my dream car. Although I wanted a forest green Subaru Outback, they didn't make them back then. Now they do. You could probably go to uh, Earl Scheib. Get him to slap some I'll paint, paint on any it. I'll paint any car for $100. He so, really will? Well, back in the 80s or something. Oh. Is that what it, is that what it was? Anyway, um, yeah, you ever think about getting it wrapped? Oof. Yeah, what would I get it wrapped as, though? You know how you can wrap cars, Brent? It's like, instead of painting it, they wrap it in, like, a printed plastic image of anything. Logos. You know, you can have your your face on there going, like, Brent Mobile. Yeah, with your email and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see those, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do you want to do that? Y'all should do it. As friends. What happened? He's gonna. <laughs> no, this will totally be worth it now. Um, all right. Yeah, I saw a car wrap this morning with uh, dinosaurs from Jurassic World. I thought you were going to say dinosaurs from the show Dinosaurs. Oh, I wish. <laughs> no, from, from Jurassic World. But then the license plate said, said like, Peaky Blinders, but missing all the... Can we see it? How could you see it? I've, I saw it this morning. Oh, I see. He thought you were just going to pull it up. No, no, no. I saw it with my eyes. I was driving behind it um, uh, this morning. It was very strange. Okay, let's get on with Well, if show. you could get wrapped, what would you wrap with? <laughs> yeah, that's the question. What would I wrap my car with? Yeah. Or, some, or not just your car, other things. Oh, man. What do I... Let me ask you this. What's up? What do you dislike in this world? What I do don't you? like, like, sauce. I'm not a big mayonnaise and mustard kind of guy. Okay. How much would you... What if we wrapped the car in, like, I'm the number one mustard man, and then it said, I'm the number one mayo man, and it's mm-hmm. you, your mm-hmm. face, and your your thumbs up and you're just promoting sauces all sauces i love how much money would i get paid some money for that yeah like to have that sort of humiliation wrapped on your car for i'm how? talking windows too you know where they perforate oh, so you yeah. can kind of see out how long full wrap a year how about a year and you can't just not drive i'm take the bus no you gotta oh, be man. daily would, driver it wouldn't be that much I, i'd say a hundred dollars? No, no, no. <laughs> it, it'd need to be a good dent in my credit card debt. I'd say like one thousand, five, <laughs> five thousand. That's your minimum. We would have gone up. Oh, shit. <laughs> Ten. You messed up. You messed up. 
We were prepared to we drop. We would have gone. I went to we the. Gone. We were prepared to drop five grand a month, but you know. Shit. Ah oh, man, okay. this is my problem. This is why I'm not. You should have talked to your agent. Yeah, you know, last night we went to the casino, and I, this, I really always want to stay. I don't ever want to leave casinos. I, I could be there. You went to a casino last night? Yeah. Who? Me and the fellas, Clay and Rod, my friends. Uh, y'all know Clay and Rod. Yeah, yeah. Which casino? We went to Yamava, which I'd never been to. That's like a nearby one you can just drive to. Yeah, and. Uh, we were playing a slot machine, a uh, baby devil or devil baby. I don't know what it's called. And they let me stay for an extra 15 or so minutes because I said, if I hit the $316,000 jackpot, I would give both of them $10,000. And they were like, really? And I said, yeah, yeah, I would. And then I was thinking about it more this morning and I was like, Damn, twenty grand to my buddies, but I'm like three hundred thousand dollars. Like, what but would y'all do in that? You scenario? wouldn't have had it if they didn't let you spend spend the extra ten minutes. What do you mean? Are you saying that's a lot of chunk? Yeah, that's a big dent. They were kind of shocked that I offered I mean, them each ten thousand. They're your best buds. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and on top of that, you just won three hundred something thousand dollars. Yeah. That. It's, a, it's virtually, it's pretty negligible, 10,000, 20,000 that is, you know? Yeah. I mean, in fact, it was 300,000 what? 316,000. Okay, so essentially 300,000. You yeah. still win so a 300,000. So we're talking like 5% you would have lost or something like that? Well, I would, no, I don't know. not even. math works? I, I, don't ask no, me. No, I wouldn't even say that. Uh, 3% maybe. Would y'all do that? It, or is that if I want a big If I want a big jackpot lottery or something, yeah, I'd be... I'd be helping people out. Maybe. Would you make dream? I bet Brent, Brent's dreams come true. I'd executive produce his weird shows. Oh, his movie. please! As long as he grew his hair out. But yeah, <laughs> he wants to see me with my hair long. Yeah, it's but my I dream. Get, I get final cut. <laughs> of course, I get final, final cut. cut final hair. cut of my hair. <laughs> I'm the star. Yeah, and I get final cut, and I'm gonna be looking over that script with a microscope. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> We gonna have big creative decisions, problems, conflicts. So y'all would be cool given the ten grand to. I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure buddies. out how much percent that was. Okay, look, hey. if it's if it's twenty per, if it's a hundred thousand, that's twenty percent. If it's two hundred thousand, cut that in half. That's it's six percent. That's ten percent. So six. it's about cut that in in half again. I no no cut, no cut that in half and add two and a half. So it's like six seven point five percent. No, no, wait. Yeah. Oh, 0.5%? Okay, you got it, whatever. 7.5%. Oh, really? That's a, okay. Hey, it's still, though, you've made something. a lot of money, though. Yeah, I would still be feeling And they're good. their best buds, too. Yeah. You would want you, to finance your best bud stuff. If you hit a jackpot for a, a bunch of money like that, would you tell everybody? No. Or Don't you tell try to, a soul. No. Yeah. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't tell, tell anybody. nobody. I won. You did? Yeah. <laughs> How much? <laughs> Million? Mega millions. <laughs> <laughs> but I just keep my low profile. I wear my denim shirt. I wear my knit hat. I yeah. just kind of be the same guy I always was. Yeah, for so sure. So people don't come out of the woodwork and start looking at me different and treating me different. I want people to treat me real. Well, Y'all know if I get that forest green Subaru Outback, mm -hmm. I've something that has changed. In I my will get life. you the Subaru. If I win a mega million, I'll get you a Subaru. No big deal. All right. Green? You say green? Forest green, yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice, good, you know clean forest green. I'll get that wrap for you. Nah. <laughs> you give me that. I'll get the forest green wrap. <laughs> I get the, yeah, I'll tell you what. I won't get you the whole new car. I'll get the forest green wrap on the O2. Instead of getting my car painted <laughs> green, can I get a green wrap? <laughs> <laughs> can I get this wrapped in green? <laughs> um, so you have a new album out that I've checked out a few times, and it's um, it's really cool. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. It's called The Older I Get, The Funnier I Was. Mm -hmm. Love that title. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> the funnier it was. The funnier I was. Oh, I was. I was, yeah. No, you don't think that. You mean your memory of yourself? When I was a little kid, I, I think it, the album is... It's not like your comedy career, like, oh, I was so much funnier five years ago. No, no, Every no. year it goes by, I think I'm funnier. I think it's more about um, being a, a l lacking self-awareness as like a 12-year-old child. Oh, comedy and is more you being think, The more you think about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, because you get too cerebral. Before, you're more visceral. Mm -hmm. Pure. Pure. No, no, no processing involved, just reaction. Yeah. Expression, reaction. Pure. Comedy in its purest form. Yeah. Do you think about it? Dilution. Mm -hmm. Filtering. Mm. It, no guttural response, just intellectual musings. Yeah. Not as... <laughs> <laughs> Something like that, you know? yeah. Well, you know, the filter, the there's less shit for it to go through in your brain. Things, yeah, in general, it's just pure. Well, there's a lot of crap going on, and then now when I think about, I'll before I say the crap that I'm thinking about, I'll want to figure out how to polish it off a bit and then say it. But as a kid, I didn't do that. Right. So like, there's videos. The it was in, what kind of the album is sort of based on is there was videos of me and Clay when we were little kids playing around, my best bud Clay, and I say uh, to him, I'm trying to encourage him to ollie off of a loading dock, and I say to him, just do it, don't be a little bitch. <laughs> but I wasn't trying to be funny, but it was very, <laughs> it was really funny. Right. Um, did he do it? Uh, yeah, hell yeah, he did it. Nice. Um, a lot of moments like that, just like looking at old videos and and things and how like I had abs for a year and I didn't what? really know that I could like be a sexy fucker. Right. Speaking of spec mm. sexy, but go on. Wait, yeah. what? <laughs> well, you were going to say something about him being sexy? Because I was going to say speaking I of sexy. I was not, no. Wait, you had abs at what age? I think I was like <laughs> 17. 17. Well, I watched this short film. I think it's pretty new that you were in and um, it's called The Idea of a You. Oh, yeah. That came out recently, right? Yeah, that came out like a year ago. Oh, a year ago. Okay. My friend Kaylee McGee made that. Yeah, I just watched it, um, I don't know, a week ago or something. Oh, cool. And? Um, and? It's good. And you can't just say you watched it. And it's good, <laughs> and you're good in it, and you're a hunk, too, in it. Oh, thanks. He's God. a hunk. This is a, I mean, you're playing a hunk kind of guy or playing something. Playing a dumb actor. But he's hunky though. Yeah, and he's got a set. You know, he, the women like him and stuff. Yeah, but sort of as a game, it's fun. It's really cool. I think you might like it, Doug. You got abs. You got abs. I don't have abs. No. What's no. there now? Nothing. And in, in fact, <laughs> my uh, today I they're was underneath. measured. They're underneath. Maybe a half. They an maybe, inch. They are. maybe he's a, shirtless. Maybe a, a little bit of nothing. Right. Well, today I was <laughs> measured. Sh my um. You were measured. My waist was measured, and it's bigger than it's ever been. Really. Uh -oh. Yeah, because uh, I what started twenty eight. No, <laughs> I started working out because I'm trying. I hurt my back really bad. Are you so. doing Marvel now? No, but I'm, but I'm trying to. The older you get, the thinner you were. <laughs> whatever. Well, that that goes for everybody. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but that's muscle. No, it ain't muscle. Oh. I just started because I'm. Tr I hurt my back, and the doctor basically said the only way I can fix it, and hopefully don't have to have surgery, is if I get abs. Really? Yeah. He said, I got to get the strongest core. The core? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. What'd you come in at? You don't have to share. 35. Hmm. Which isn't, you know, that's nothing. That's your waist? Yeah. 35, huh? Mm-hmm. What's yours? I think it's 32. Is that Last right? Last time I bought pants, that's what the size was. Well, so she, But I fit in the... She was saying... I think um, the, so, the pants size is different than the measurement. The pants is technically a measurement of your hips, she said. Sometimes I could get into like a 30. Oh, so, you really? What are you at? 30. No. Well, at least that's what I get for pants is 30. Right. I like them a little um, baggy. I go. I get I go, 33 or 34. I get a little bigger. That's not baggy for me, but yeah. What? 34? Oh, okay. You like yeah. them just right. Maybe I could go 28. What's the brand <laughs> that you're rocking? Right now, uh, Levi. Those are Levi like, Strauss. Are you doing your slacks? The classic Brent slacks? The Sl navy blue pants you used to wear all the time? Or are they black? I don't. Uh, no, I don't know what let you me mean check, by that. Let me these check are out black. These, bad boys. these are black denim. He goes black denim. Oh, did you always do that? Yeah. Huh. But I have navy blue pants as well. I think, generally speaking, I do thirty for pants. And what's the number? Five hundred one. No, I think this this one here might be five zero five or five eleven. Oh, five good. might be five eleven. Five zero. Never forget five eleven. I'm a five five zero. What are you, what are you? I haven't had Levi's in a while. Oh it's, man, it's fun. Yeah. To go to the Levi's store and go through all the different numbers. Oh, it's five eleven. Five eleven, cool. Isn't that the? Isn't that some kind of info line or something? Five five one one. Could be. 
Seriously? Something like that. Information yeah. traffic. So, something like that. It's some kind of info line. Five one one. Well, three three one one. No, is I know three one one. Emergency inf- information. But then five one one is something. Anyway, whatever. Well, speaking of that, I did think of a funny idea. Hmm. Um, maybe my friend and I came up with it or something. But you got nine one one when you have an emergency, right? Right. What do you want to? You know, sometimes people get into these embarrassing emergencies, like they took Viagra, they've had a boner for twelve hours, or, or they, they have a gerbil stuck in their butt. Yeah, they got a gerbil stuck in their butt. They need to call. A more sensitive 911, so they call 6911. <laughs> That's a great. And idea. then these like, these like, hardcore tattooed like paramedics come. They're like, we've seen it all. We do this shit ourselves. You know, <laughs> we've seen the light bulb up the butt. What do you got? No, That's a gr- yeah. You know, we're 6911. <laughs> and if you tell and kids, they, their about- ambulance is like black. Yeah. And, <laughs> and when they, the dispatcher answers the phone, that you call them, and she goes, sixty nine one one. What's your issue? You know, your or, she's kind of sexy. Sixty nine one one. We've seen it all. Yeah. <laughs> but sixty nine one one. How can I help you? <laughs> you tell high schooler kids, hey man, if y'all do something really embarrassing, and you're too embarrassed to call nine one one because you don't want your parents to get mad at you, you got to do sixty nine one one, and it saves lives. Yeah, it's a great idea. It's only five dollars a minute. <laughs> yeah, are you in high school and you found some pot and you're freaking out and you smoked pot or you ate a brownie and you think you're dying? Call sixty nine one one. It shouldn't be a sexy woman. It should be like a dude, like sixty nine one one. It's all right. What's up? <laughs> sixty nine one one. How can I help 69-1-1. you? Sixty nine one one. What's your emergency, yeah. bruh? Sixty nine one one. How can I help you? Sixty nine one one. It's like Keanu Reeves over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. It's like Bill and Ted's like. This is Keanu. Yeah, I got these. Keanu sh- speaking. Okay. Speaking Keanu, I got these shoes because I saw an old picture of him wearing these shoes. Can you get it up? Found them on eBay. Really? Dude. So are those older shoes? Are those Dunks? These are Terminators, is what they're called. Really? Yeah. Hmm. What year did he wear them? Mm, I don't know, late '90s, probably. Oh, really? Okay. Are you a Keanu head? Oh, big time. Really? Yeah, I got I got his poster on my wall. Of what? Uh, well, him and what? River Phoenix, and in, in uh, it's a photo shoot uh, from my own, Idaho, Idaho. Yeah. my own private Idaho. Oh. Yeah. My own private Idaho. Oh, my own private Idaho. Forgot about that. I got that mixed up with Drugstore Cowboy. Same director. Who's oh, in Matt that, Dillon is Dillon's in, in that. Yeah. Oh yeah, Drugstore Cowboys in that, but then um. Isn't th- aren't they both? I know Keanu for sure is, and Cowgirls, even Cowgirls get the blues, which Gus Van Sant did as well. I don't know. Oh, uh, anyway. But, I haven't seen oh, that one. you know what they're both in? Is that movie, oh, I forgot what it was called, but it's like this woman tries to poison her husband or kill her husband, played by Kevin Klein, I think. You know. Oh, and, To Die For? Yeah, To Die For. They're both in Keanu's that movie. not in that. I thought he was. Neither is River. He's dead. I He's think dead, he right? is. No. no, Joaquin is. And no, Casey no. Affleck. I just no. saw it. It's one of my favorite movies. No, no, no. It's a different movie. Oh, no, 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 no. To Die For... No, something else. is Kevin Klein. He's this husband. Oh. He's a f- kind of... A, he cheats on her and he tries, tries to kill her. Anyway, they're both in it, but they're not together. They're in... Oh, sick. There's some movie. I forgot what it was. Uh, you know I'm going to watch it. Oh, you watch every Keanu movie? I love him. Who do you... Who's your most adored... Who do you love the most out of all the actors? Hmm. Sounds like it could be Keanu. Well, no, he likes Leonardo DiCaprio as well, right? Do I? Oh, yeah, I he's know. cool. I oh. like, I like um, Tom Cruise, Keanu. I like the biggest names. Yeah, I mean <laughs> they're cool. Um, What's your favorite Keanu? Which, I mean, it's like got to be my own private Idaho. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, it's one of my favorite movies ever made. Uh, man, big actors, you know, Nicolas Cage. Um, it's hard to. I don't so know. So your favorites the are spot. the well, the most well-known ones. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, speaking of movies, let's talk about the Civil Dead. Okay. I feel. Like oh, we, I had one question. Did we about, talk about you mentioned well, Viagra. I think we did, but it's it's coming back. You mentioned Viagra taking it. In. Has that ever actually happened where someone gets a boner for twelve hours and then calls nine eleven or nine one one? That's a good question. Also, it, wouldn't it be like, what are they gonna do? I don't think you can get a boner for that long. I, I've never... Uh, sure. I, I'm interested in Viagra because, to me, it seems fun to have a boner for 12 hours. <laughs> you go to Hawaii with your girlfriend or something? <laughs> Run around with a boner for 12 hours? That seems well, fun. Once you're done with it, you probably don't I, want it to be I, a boner anymore. But you, know what you I mean? just wait a little while and, <laughs> and you're ready to rock. I think, you need to, I think you need to be excited for it to even to be hard. I, uh, think. No, I, I don't think, know. I, 
I think there's some valve that opens. That the <laughs> That's what I thought it had. There's got to be some valve down there that the well, pill is working on. Look, I I worked with somebody who took one or mm-hmm. took a pill because for sh- for something we were shooting, and they it was still hard for them to it was difficult for them to get hard. Oh, and even though they were on the Viagra, and I'm saying they as if I'm trying to be mysterious. It's obviously, it was a guy, but it was, uh, <laughs> and it's clearly, I think I know the project. <laughs> it's quite an obvious project. No, it's, it's not. not the drummer. It's not. Okay. Oh, that's what I was thinking. It was something else. And wait, but he needed what something. What kind of thing is Brent? He, need he needed for, something right? to arouse him. Still, under, you still need to be aroused. So you had to do it. <laughs> what arouse him? Yeah. So you had to show him a picture of Pamela Anderson. Well, what I did is I just put a bag over or my Hasselhoff. head, wore the outfit Pamela Anderson wears in barbed wire, and mm-hmm. I went into, well, walked into the room and I said, sixty nine one one. This is Pamela speaking. <laughs> the, the rest is history. And then, if, doing, you've, doing, doing, doing. if you've had an erection for more than twelve hours, call me. <laughs> call me now. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> call me now. I'm waiting. The hottest Pamela's are standing by. Well, wow. okay, so the well mo- that answers a lot of questions. The Thank movie you. you, you and Clay made. Yeah. Why doesn't he call his pro- promotion Claymation? <laughs> Tell me <laughs> anyway. about it. Um, so you guys made a movie. I think we must have talked about it on the Poundcast before. That time that you were on the Zoom. No, that was before. That was we before. Made it. Oh, then maybe we well, maybe didn't. we just had Clay on. Did we? I can't. Maybe we didn't I have don't any. Know. Maybe we never mentioned it. Well, you guys made a movie called yeah. The Civil Dead. Oh yeah. And it's out yeah. right now, and, and it's but yeah, we saw it a while ago, but now it's like out, which mm-hmm. is really cool. Wait, what do you mean out again? It's in theaters. They're screening it across the country right now. Really? In theaters? Yeah. yeah. Wait, how did it was out on online for a bit? Oh, it came out for one week. It came January out, oh, of twenty. It was a film festival. That's yeah. why it was yeah. Sundance. Yeah, it was Slam out. Dance. It was Slam out dance. for that. Yeah. I think it. maybe that's when we talked. That's about. when I saw it. Okay. Yeah, but now oh, it's like in maybe, the, you know. now it's in theaters. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, um, maybe we did talk about it. So before. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Let's talk about it again. <laughs> okay, we'll give uh, it a little shout out. Here. Yeah, it's in theaters now. Uh, it's in a lot of. I w- it used to just be in the Alamo Draft House theaters, but now it's in a bunch of theaters all over the country, and they keep slapping it in more theaters. They're kind of taking a break, I think, right now because of Ant Man. Ant Man needs a few more days to <laughs> make all the money in the world, and then right. they're gonna put our movie back in the theaters. I think that's cool. But uh, yeah, it's called The Civil Dead. Who dis? Who picked it up for distribution? Utopia Films or distribution, and which is a cool company. Well, maybe if this takes off, you can get that Green Forester or oh. Outback or the Rap. At least I'd take a Forester. You used to have one, right? Yeah. <laughs> nice looking car. <laughs> Uh, beautiful cars. Is your hair um, the way it is right now for a roll, or is that just your style right no, now? No, I just dyed it blonde. I was going on tour. I actually kind of had a, an episode, I think. I was going on tour uh, in October. I was, like, stressed out about it. It was, like, a month and a couple weeks long. And for some reason, I decided to dye my hair blonde because I thought it would be fun documentation for this tour to have blonde hair. And to see if you have more fun. I I didn't have more fun. <laughs> um, but now I'm starting it to. It probably gave you some kind of confidence. Like, look, I look... I look different. I look like I should belong on stage. I'm the star here. Are you yeah. trying to kind of start the embody the whole idea of the golden boy? Because <laughs> with the golden Wait, hair. Wait, so when you did the uh, the tour, when mm-hmm. you do a tour now, because you do music, mm-hmm. do you also do stand-up? Yeah. Do you do it like Tim Heidecker? No, <laughs> I do it, mix it in together. It's so all, you every, do like comedy stuff and then you'll be like, I'll do a song now and then you get It's back. like 10 minutes of jokes or five minutes of jokes that leads into the song and often will like inform the lyrics of the song a little bit more, you know? Um, I understand that. So that yeah, sure. that's kind of how I do it. But then I went on tour uh, with uh, my buddies, Clay and Bud, mm-hmm. uh, just playing music. And then uh, we'll do like was that under little your bits name or was that Tooks? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Whitmer Thomas and the Clay Tatum Band. I think is really? what it was called. Or was it we really? would change the band name all the time. At one point, it was Whitmer Thomas and the Movie Stars. <laughs> and then uh, we're gonna go. Was it this your same music or was it like new songs that aren't from your? It's like a few new s- songs, a few old songs. Nice. And then we're gonna do it again in April on this opening for this band called Howdy. Oh. Which is a cool, really cool band. Um, 
Yeah. So, so you're just I, living a creative lifestyle. I am, yeah. It's a hard li- it's a it's a tricky lifestyle. Why is it tricky? Just being gone all the time. Oh. You can get You're on the road. You're a road dog. I've been a road dog and it's funny cuz I really don't like being away from LA, but I've been away from LA too much for months, like 6 months out of the year. Wow. I don't ever travel. But Brent, we should put something together. Okay. Yeah. For the new pound yeah. house season, we should do a little tour. Sure. We'll, uh, we'll reveal the... We'll I'm going to say it on the record the, now that we got to put that together. We'll premiere the episodes that yeah. way. Something like that. Did you do a tour for the Civil Dead? Yeah. So what did you do? Um, do you do Q&As at these yeah, different theaters? Yeah, we did theaters? Q&As. And uh, sometimes we did intro the movie from, uh, you know, just all around San Francisco, Denver, Austin, New York. I think that's it, actually. When you, tr- when you tour, are you in the big boy bus? No, I'm in a little boy car, Subaru. Sometimes you just drive your own dang car. Yeah, but you got the other boys with you. Yeah, so that's fun. Yeah, it's really fun. It's much more fun to tour as a band than it is as a comedian by myself. Sure. Yeah. Did you do a lot of touring by yourself as a comedian? Yeah. Oh yeah. But and I would play to backing tracks Mm -hmm. with whenever I would do music in the show. It's way more fun to have a band. Did they ever skip Millie Vanilli style and you're embarrassed and you have to walk off stage? They careers ruined. <laughs> I'm sure there's been that kind of technical that. difficulty. No. Not career ruin, career ruining, but there's been plenty of times where I'll put like a filter on my face, uh, and sing, and it's like projected in the background behind me uh-huh. sometimes. And a lot of times I'm doing it and making all these weird faces, mm-hmm. and then the crowd isn't really reacting and then I turn around and I realize that the projector is not plugged in and I've just <laughs> been looking in their mind I've just been looking at my phone making weird faces you're just like yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. how many times does that happen it happens all the time this last headlining tour I did in uh, October November and December there was more technical difficulties than I've ever experienced and I don't even have that much tech but like one of the shows the PA and the lights broke. And these are like good f- venues and stuff. It was just like an unlucky thing. What kind yeah. of venues you are just these? just do like, hey, hey, here I am. Black box theater, no mic. You just like. Uh, I would kind of go. Allow it Maybe would they like, wouldn't allow that. Half of the PA would break. Uh-huh. Like the speakers. Are these. It would like go in and out. Music venues? Yeah. Uh-huh. Hey, what, uh, what, how many s- capacity? What's the. Maybe. Th- 300 400 people Mm -hmm. but then i think a lot of time the reason the stuff broke is because people will would book me not knowing that i'm going to do music and so they would hire whoever the engineer sound engineer and lighting engineer that night was just the comedy guy would just usually be like a bartender who can turn on a right a easy enough turn on a pa but then get there and be like having to deal with all this music stuff Mm -hmm. so my fault it's my fault what's next <laughs> me and clay want to make another movie what are you gonna do this summer make a movie i hope so man did clay write it yeah, we were i know it. i talked to i definitely know i talked to clay and i'm probably being seemed like an idiot maybe he was on the show but you do so many podcasts you kind of forget yeah you know? for sure yeah um we wrote it we wrote the movie together uh, yeah is it gonna be you wrote the new one. We wrote both of them. Right. Well, the other one too, and yeah. the new one. Yeah. And is it also like the thing about the Civil Dead? I thought it was really inspiring because it's sort of like it's mostly just you and him, and maybe another character here and there, like in a room or in a place. It just seems like it's contained. You mm-hmm. contained it, and um, yeah, it just seemed like something. It seemed like. I don't know, just from someone like me who wants to make a movie one day, Mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, you can do it. They just did it. They freaking did it. Now it's in the movie theaters. Yeah. You can definitely, I mean, y'all can. Are you going to go to the movie theaters and watch it? Absolutely do it. No, I've seen it. Just kind of go in low key just to see the reaction. I poked my head in every now and again. (laughs) Have you you gone, you've seen the screenings though? Yeah. Some of them. Not all of the movie, but I'll watch a little bit of it. And how do you like people reacting to it? It's awesome. People laugh at different kind of stuff. 
Yeah. Um, and you walk out, and you're like, what the hell, man? I, I'm in this movie. <laughs> I think kidding. so. Sometimes no it's kind of awkward. No one would walk no, out. No, people walk out. It, it's weird. It's not the, the easiest landscape for comedy in general. Like, yeah, what's it is weird. Like, why don't, they don't make comedies anymore either. No. They, and rare, they make like five a year or something. It's pretty... At the major studios. Maybe they do. It's harsh. It's Less. like a lot of the negative criticism is straight up like the 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 audience was laughing but i don't i don't really like the humor or something and so they give it a negative review and i'm, I'm just like oh these film critics some film critics. you or, read the reviews um i used to read them but and on what dirty rotten tomatoes on, no on, uh, <laughs> dirty rotten tomatoes <laughs> on letterbox <laughs> oh letterbox which is more just normal people not necessarily critics but yeah, so people... I'd read them. I'd there's read like every a, single review. If I made a movie, I'd be like, I want to know what people think so I can know. Yeah. Um, Warts and all. <laughs> so, you know, people, I think, walk out because they're like, what the hell is this not Really? Funny? Walk well, out? I didn't mean this. I was kidding about that, but... No, I, I, think I saw 80 for Brady the other day. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I wanted to walk... I mean, we all went as a group of friends, sort of like, let's go see 80 for Brady, kind of as a joke. We were... Mm-hmm. I was at a Super Bowl party and we're like, let's go see 80 for Brady tomorrow. Maybe eight of us got together. Eight of us? Wow. By the time, you know, word got out, eight of us showed up. In the first 10 minutes, I'm like, oh man, I made a mistake. Mm-hmm. I'm just sitting there like, if I was by myself, I'd be fine. But it's that feeling of like, everyone hates me. Like, I came up with this. This is so cringy. Who came besides Andre Highland? I'll tell you in a minute. Mm hmm. But then I started to like it. I was like, by the end of it, I'm like, I enjoyed it a lot. I laughed out loud several times. Oh, that's nice. Guess what? What? It's kind of fun. It's a fun movie. I have respect for it. I mean, just based on the previews. I think it's cool that they have these older women in it, you know? (laughs) But it's so weird that Tom Brady, he like, okay, he wins the Super Bowl. It's this big comeback. And he's like, I'm going to make a movie about this where I'm sort of like the hero who like listens to some old lady and spoiler alert he wins the game but it's just sort of a weird thing to like he's in the movie it's about him doing like the ultimate like sporting challenge and um it's just something weird about that you know what I mean like Mm. living a heroic moment and then making a movie about it and then Mm. you're starring in it also reliving that heroic moment with this fictionalized kind of like it's based on a true story there was like some 80 year old women who wanted to go to the Super Bowl oh really yeah so it's based on a true story I don't know how true it is but the final product but anyway I'm thinking what the hell is this movie this football movie this total NFL propaganda movie the whole movie is like NFL is awesome NFL is awesome you know like um I don't know what my point is. Well, it's kind of crazy. I mean, the two of those women are actually really truly are in their 80s. One of them's in her 90s. And the Which one? one? Rita Moreno, I think. Which I got to check this out. Hmm? Which one's that? The one in West Side Story. <laughs> the one who's not Jane Fonda, not Sally Field, and not um, Lily Tomlin, right? Really? Yeah. I, keep, I think she keeps, keeps saying she's 75. Sally Field is sev- in her 70s. Okay. I and think. guess what? I think. Guess who was the best one in that movie? Sally? S- That's J- your guess? J- well, Sally. Uh, no, uh, Lily Tomlin. Sally steals the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course. She well, she's great. She's one of my favorites, actually. Yeah, she's one of the best. I'm mean, talking about favorite she's actors. She's really good. Sally yeah. stole it. Sally stole it. Anyway, the landscape for making a comedy. Well, we got to go support 80 for Brady because... If that movie's a huge hit, then they're gonna make other comedies. Yeah, starring eighty-year-old women. I think it's cool that they have these all these you know these older women who are, you know, doing their thing. One of them's in their nineties. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, yeah I think she is ninety. You know, showbiz is back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, do you d- feel like there's not any com- real comedies anymore? Well, there's just a a style of comedy that isn't out that isn't oh, around what would anymore. that style be you know if there is a comedy like a comedy that's in the whatever cool review or whatever it's usually like there's another element to it it's like absurdist or it's 
like e extremely it's not the most broad but fun kind of comedy like we kind of grew, or i grew up watching there's usually like an art it's a love story it's like or it's like the lobster or something that's like a, a comedy oh, dark that, comedy yeah i never saw it but understated it seemed, understated sort you're of not sitting there laughing but it's a comedy right, right. you want something that is not from the brain something from the body mm -hmm. something, something from the balls. 12 year old expression pure yeah. yeah, and I'm not saying that that's what The Civil Dead is, but there's just not those style of movies anymore. Mm -hmm. The Civil Dead has moments like that, like knucklehead kind of moments. Yeah. I think, um, I'm trying to think of something that I thought was weird. I mean, like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood or Wolf of Wall Street, I feel like those are the closest movies to like an older comedy that I've seen in a long time. So you're not, talk you're not talking the kind of... Comedies I want to see, like Naked Gun or something, Blues Brothers or Fairly Brothers, kind of like well, that dude, airplane. Wolf of Wall Street Brothers. is like a Fairly Brothers movie. What to is me. it? What uh, is it? Wolf of Wall Street, like the whole scene where they're all messed up on whatever that drug is. Well, they, certainly that part when he's crawling around on the ground yeah. and stuff. That's that was slapstick. Yeah, I love that stuff. Yeah, more of that. What, please. what part of um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood felt really? Kind of. Oh, when he's like losing his mind, crying in the trailer, oh. or when uh, I guess the thing at the end, what happens at the end, and the is, whole end sequence yeah. is hilarious. <laughs> a lot of good stuff in that. That's true, but it's not like bam, bam the whole time, right? Like, nah, who's gonna be the one to do that? A your, naked Gun. Do you have a favorite comedy movie that you do? Yeah, probably Dumb and Dumber. I think yeah. it's pretty solid all the way through you, undeniable you didn't mention that jim carrey he's one of your favorite actors oh yeah time, right? for sure he's probably your number one right michael keaton and jim carrey are my number one uh -huh. what's your number one keaton hmm <laughs> he's been in a lot of good ones it's got to be beetlejuice it's, gotta be Beetle. it's either beetlejuice <laughs> batman or multiplicity what about mr mom mr mom mr mom's great you know and what about jack nicholson do you like him because i uh yeah, I think I do like him. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all want to talk to Josh Nicholson, Jack Nicholson's brother? Yeah. Well, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what was well, it like growing up with uh, your, your brother, Jack? It was great. The, the difference between... Uh, we didn't get along too great, though, because I like going to Clippers games and sitting as high up as possible. <laughs> oh, and he likes going to Lakers games and sitting down in yeah. courtside. That's okay, right. Okay, that's the difference between the brothers. Yeah. Interesting. I was watching this clip, and I emailed Whitmer about this already, but I watched this clip. I'd seen this movie before, but Five Easy Pieces, you know? There's a clip in the diner where he's talking about... Um, Mm -hmm. uh, he, I forgot what it was. It, sandwich. It, he was some kind of sandwich thing, and he doesn't. I was watching this clip, and the you know the waitress is saying, "Well, we can't do that or whatever." And he said, "All right, well, let me just order this." That's and a this. famous clip where he's like, "Yeah, yeah, hold the tuna, yeah, yeah, or hold, the thing, like, hold the chicken, right, the chicken. like makes and the thing you, you can want. put it between your legs or something." Yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he, it's kind of, you know, this is at a time that's a little before he got really leaned into the, mm -hmm. you know, what you're doing right there. It's and. I was watching him, and I, you came to mind. It just reminded me of you, oh, actually, that's nice. for some reason. I mean, that's one of my I, favorite movies of all time. So probably, that's really nice of you to say. Well, it's just something about that, him, the young Jack Nicholson, I was thinking him. I also, you know, I was watching this, you know, you ever seen that movie, uh, My Bodyguard? Yeah. You see, he reminds, I was the young Matt Dillon in that, Whitmer. Really? Is Matt Dillon the... the the he's the bully, bully in that. He's the yeah. bully. Yeah, yeah. Man, he kind of looked like he looked like him. Looks like him a little bit. He's got probably have some big old teeth. Well, he just looked kind of similar or something. I don't know. It reminded me he's of. He's got you. that Hollywood stage and screen vibe. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Appreciate that. <laughs> Let me tell you a little something about our sponsor, Green Chef. Oh, Green Chef. That's the meal kit service, right? Very good, Doug. Green Chef has meal kit options for every lifestyle: keto and paleo. Vegan, vegetarian, fast and fit, Mediterranean, and gluten-free. Now, I, I heard their recipes feature organic produce, premium proteins, and sustainably sourced ingredients. Is this true? It is. And they expanded their menu. You can now choose from 30 recipes weekly um, with the option of mix and match meals from different dietary preferences in the same box without changing your plan. 
Guess what, Brent? What? I ordered the vegan box. You know I you know I go vegan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got these kale flatbreads that were so delicious and oh, I got yeah? this couscous Ooh. with um garbanzo beans. And it was fun to make. I got to admit all the all the you know the ingredients were portioned out. And these are not dishes I would normally make, so it was really fun. Yeah. And uh it was delicious. Yeah. That's what. That's the box I got. Yeah. I, well, I I got a box. It had. Well, I've actually now had two different boxes. I've done. Oh. I've done two different weeks here. Well, there was three meals, meal kits in each, each box. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I got um, in my first week, I had the first dish I made. Mm-hmm. It was called. It was the pork tenderloin with lemon Dijon vinaigrette. Ah. It was good. Uh huh. It was definitely good. And I had the sriracha tamari beef bowl. And then I had the and a Thai style chicken and bell pepper soup. Okay, that was the first week. Okay. Okay. And you know the thing is, is if you're, I cook. Like you said, it's all portioned out, so it's yeah. easy, and you're not having to go to the store to buy the stuff. But you do cook some stuff. You but know? you're cooking. It, 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 gets, you, the, it gets you to like. It's an in between. The, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like fun. it's not. It's in between ordering delivery from a restaurant and in between, or in, and then making doing it fully it from, from scratch. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and go, having to go to the store and figure out all this stuff you got to yeah, get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they they give you, they send you everything you need, and then you, and it's all done already. Like, for example, for the um the chicken, right? It's already was cut up. You know, I didn't have to cut up the chicken. You know, it was it was it was raw, but it was cut. It was already kind of cut up and stuff. You know, and then um, the second week I had the gyro. Or is it gyro or gyro? You know, G Y R O. You know, gyro. It's gyro. Gyro spice. No, gyro, man. Gyro spiced pork tenderloin kale salad. I had the Middle Eastern style beef bowl, and I had the white bean chicken chili, which I just had today actually, and they were all good. And you know what? Here's the thing. This is what I this is what I like. You know, when I go to restaurants, I always got to say, "Oh, what does this have in it? Do I Okay, I don't want this in. Uh, can you just hold the onions, right. hold the garlic? I don't, you know, and that's always hard and a lot of times people at the restaurants will say, "No, you know for sure." They'll say, "I can't. Oh, we can't do it. It's already in there or mm-hmm. whatever or something like that." With this I do what I want, okay? <laughs> there are and look, some of these recipes and some of the meals they sent, they don't some of them I actually like all the ingredients, but sometimes there's ingredients that I don't personally want, like say onions or garlic mm-hmm, kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And I say, and I do what I want. You know why? Because with Green Chef, I'm the chef. Okay, <laughs> my food, my rules, and you I put in it what I want. You said it, Brent. So go to greenchef.com/poundcast60 and use the code poundcast60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. By the way, if you're a single person, you know, like myself, you know, with no one to share oh, your life with. Oh, the single ladies. Oh, with, <laughs> with no one to share your life with. You got, <laughs> I get, you, you cook one meal, it's, it's actually serves two. So you've, you got the next day made also. Guess what? I ate both. <laughs> In one I'm sitting? Bad. I'm a bad boy. In one sitting? I sure did. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Anyway, that's greenchef.com slash poundcast60 and use code pound60. Sorry, I always say pound60. Poundcast60 to get 60% off plus free shipping for Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. Yeah, so Should we try you. to call Clay? Oh, yeah. We have a little dongle here. We can we can call Clay. Mm. Uh oh, Brent, you won't hear him. I'll hear him. Might need another set of headphones. Clay asked me to FaceTime him. Oh, that'll still work. The audio, or a FaceTime audio. Yeah, okay. Want me to wait till y'all got headphones? It's all yeah. right. Go ahead. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you gotta get one too. Okay. So what's Clay going to do? He's going to do his kind of song for us? or yeah. <laughs> Maybe y'all got some questions for him? Well, right now, why don't we plug... You Thanks. guys have a podcast. Let's plug that. Our podcast is called the American Arts and Culture Review. And what, um, what kind of stuff do you do? Um, Arts and culture? Yeah, we talk about th- things we've seen. You want that Wi-Fi? Your Uh-oh. podcast is you know pretty silly and stuff, right? Yeah, big time. So my qu- question is... is with the title like American Arts and Review, 
do you get the wrong audience sometimes checking it out or expecting something less silly and more serious and then they come to see it and they think this is just a bunch of jokers what's what's going on we wanted something more highbrow or something i think uh, probably i don't think we have enough of an audience for people to to know or to think about um that necessarily okay what's the name of the wi-fi um i could just call him okay i guess if it's all the same thing do you have fa- can you, you facetime need- call him because he doesn't get s- facetime calling you know where it's not you don't see his face it's that other thing yeah facetime audio let's yeah, try yeah. it here uh, we should call it phone be, time da, 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 tell da, me da, about <laughs> contacts so um yeah so i don't think people are getting too mad uh-huh no, I mean, yeah, you know, you haven't seen a review or anything that said. <laughs> I, don't I thought this a, was going to be a, an arts number? and culture thing. You know, it's just these guys joking around. Yeah. Mm. Here, I can s- send it to you. Okay. Sorry, everybody. Mm. So, is Jack one of your favorites? Oh yeah, it's a good impression you're doing of him. Thanks, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, My name's go. Jack. Jack. That's good. Wait, I gotta do. Uh, oops, Who else I can you do? Do that. I gotta do. Uh, Owen Wilson, but he's lost his voice. Yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> Can't really talk. He lost. Here we his go. Voice. Yeah. You can hear him, right? Yeah. Can you? Do- I can hear the ringing. Yeah. He's probably gonna be like, "Who's this?" It's one of those. Oh, he denied Hi. me. I didn't deny nothing. Oh. <laughs> what's up, Clay? You're on the Poundcast. Welcome. Hi. What's up, gang? We just wanted to talk about... Um, we just want to say hi since we had Whitmer here. And the Civil Dead is in theaters now, so we give you a little plug. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, where can people... Have you been on this show before? Yeah, I've been on here. Talking about Man? the Civil Dead? No, well, actually, I don't remember. I remember it was during the pandemic. I, I think I, from... I think I talked to you, and you we did discuss like I had some basic questions about how it got made, and you said I th- we had that conversation yeah. in real life. Maybe that was just a real life conversation. Yeah, it was. That, yeah. Was that but I was curious how it got made, and we can maybe just go over it a little bit. You said you had. I don't know if this is top secret information, but I said, how did you fund your movie? Mm-hmm. And well, what? I had, I think I told you I had a friend, uh, I had a friend randomly call me and offer uh, $30,000 to make a feature. And I was like, oh, I, actually, uh, cool. I actually have a really cool idea. It's this. And he goes, I don't care. I don't care what the idea is. So just t- it, take the money and make a movie. How did you, and, how did you get, yeah, who, who's yeah, friend, what happen? friend is this? This is a friend that I went to film school with like uh, 12, 13 14 years ago and he saw a short film that i did uh and he was like how much did that cost and i was like 800 bucks and he goes well if i give you a thirty thousand, can you make a, a longer one i go i sure can buddy huh and what has where did he get the money he's i he i i don't, don't know worry about well, it. He's, he has his own like film production thing he does commercials and he also does bitcoin he's a he's a he's a big fan of that he's a crypto god y'all got any crypto me? Yeah. I I sold all the little crypto I had. I had a few. Um, I got the Coinbase app, and I put a few hundred bucks here and there. Hmm. I think it went up to a few grand, and then it came. Then it came way down, and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm just. I need that. I kind of needed the money. I so do. I, dumped, I mean, I dumped I'm, it. I'm locked in. You're locked for in. now. You're cool. locked in for life. waiting for it to go back up. Okay, cool. Yeah. How about you? Nah, uh, Clay and our other friends. <laughs> Uh, during lockdown, we're getting really into all this stuff, but yeah. they just figured I didn't want to know about it, so they they kept it uh, between them amongst themselves. I wish I didn't yeah. get involved. Yeah, that's and, cool though. Some guy from film school that you know and just said out of nowhere, "You want thirty grand? I don't care what it's about." Well, no, he kind of yeah. he he wanted to get out of. He wanted to get into film production because he produces commercials and music videos and things like that. And he just knew he could, you know, we've we known him. So it's like, yeah, it's the and, whole thing. Um, is he getting a return on his vest- investment? 
I think he has. I'm not. I mean, the check's not hasn't come yet, but I'm sure one day it will, and I think he'll. I think he'll do fine. Let me ask you this: When you're showing in a theater, do you get a cut of the corn? No. I want the cut of the corn, and I just don't know where the corn goes. I think it goes to a bunch of the corn. Sees a lot of hands before it, it comes to us. I worked at a movie theater like in high school or college, and I'm pretty sure they said. The only money the theater gets is from the refreshments. From the corn. That's why it's so expensive. Yeah. What? That's the yeah, like all the ticket prices go to the movie, something like that. So we don't get a percentage of the corn. No. No, but you Clay, get the full. You get the full corn, ticket man. prices. But we can go to these theaters and sell merch out right outside the where people <laughs> walk out. Well, theater too. And we could also probably sell our our own corn. Have it like oh yeah, corn. Yeah, you could do a little corn stand outside. Be like, hey, filmmaker here. If you're gonna see the Civil Dead, support us by buying my my corn. It's cheap and make it cheaper idea. too, and you'll still make a lot of money. Not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Freshly popped. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't know what stopped me doing that before the movie. Yeah, exactly. And then you, you could be scalping corn since day one. Corn yeah. scalpers. <laughs> corn scalpers. That sounds like yeah. A movie. I had I, I mentioned this once on the podcast before, but like going on a plane with a bunch of stuff to sell. Mm. You know, kind of like you know, I got they got peanuts. I got some good stuff. I got Oreos. I got you know better stuff, and it, it'll be cheaper. I'll do cash right here. Just walk backwards down the aisle with like a little cart. Bring your own little cart. That's Do that in front of a movie theater or in the movie theater. Once people sat down, like, I know the refresh popcorn is, cr- the prices are crazy. Look, I got Coca-Cola right here, cans. Mm. I'll do two bucks. Let's go. Let's shut this theater down. Let's go. I like that. That's cool. Now, Clay, when you go to a movie, what's your go-to, um, what do you get? I'm a gummy guy. I don't like chocolate. I don't like. I can't do corn because corn messes up my stomach. Oh. Uh, so I'm a gummy guy, and I also I'm a gummy I guy. love the I love the I love the machines where you can control your nasty little soda, where you can make put orange in your uh, in your sprite. Yeah. Oh yeah, have y'all been checking that out at the AMC? Those are insane. I want to I want to know stuff. how do they how do they. How does that n- nozzle not be tainted by the other flavors? It's, I don't know. But I, I think it is. There's like 30 different we're choices. All okay with it. I've been getting vanilla cream and with put some grape soda in there. Yeah? Is that your... Vanilla grape. It's so good. It's so it, good. What is this thing? Is it a thing where you can choose your own flavors? Yeah. I mean, you can At create the your AMC own flavors. theaters. You create your own flavors? It's like a screen and you pick your soda. It's a digital like touchpad. I know, but is it made for you to specifically create your own flavors or is it uh no it's made for okay. there's just tons of choices there must be over 20 options yeah no i've seen things like that and before. then uh, but you there's nothing stopping you from mixing it yeah, there's right. nothing stopping you from a vanilla powerade but it would be cool if they had a machine that was really geared towards yeah create your own flavors you know you've got all the base flavors here Put some of you know, put a little, and then they can be recommended on the side. There's recommended recipes, you mm. know, and <laughs> they, and then you know, people can go in and kind of build their own sodas. That could be kind of cool, or even maybe that doesn't even be soda, make it just different drinks. Yeah, you yeah, can have could, an app, you can make Andre Highland's Dr. Pepper MD. You know that one? No, if you mix Dr. Pepper and Mountain Dew, <laughs> they cut in half. They separate like a black and tan. Oh, wow. Perfectly. The so hell? the top is green or the bottom is green, and they perfectly separate. This is drink. Dr. Pepper MD. <laughs> I also like it that it's a doctor and it's an MD. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they totally separate. Like, what other drinks are like that? Like, you got the, you know, the Arnold black and Palmer? tan. Arnold Palmer? I don't know. Ar- Arnold Palmer's... <laughs> Arnold Palmer's don't really separate like that. Oh, okay. No. It's a bit different. I don't know what a black and tan is either. That's like Bass and Guinness, I think. But the black part, the, the Guinness, is they're different, molecularly different. So they, if you look at the glass, they're not mixed. It's like oil and vinegar. It's like mm. completely separated. Nice. Dr. Pepper MD. That's cool. Uh, that's what I'm saying is you can have, yeah. You, you can have an app with different menu, different, like, Different combos and also different known figures have their suggestions of, oh, we try the, we'll try the Andre Highland, you know, he calls it the right. Dr. Dr. MD, you Dr. know, whatever. Pepper MD, and so forth. Series. You can have your own flavors. And you can scan it and it just makes it. 
Yeah, oh, that's Beep. yeah, great. Yeah, just, easy. But if you want to, but if you want to create it on the spot too, you can do it. You can say, yeah, I want to put a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a whole lot of this, a little bit of this. <laughs> you know, Bismol. Well, what I do. Yeah, what if they had Pepto Bismol? They had Bismol for, for people like Clay who want to eat the corn, but it hurts their stomach. Oh you, yeah, you hit the Pepto. Why don't they just make Pepto Bismol <laughs> into a drink without the medicine? That's stuff? what I was thinking. Shit like a so peppermint good. kind of, a kind of thick kind of bubble peppermint, gummy, kind yeah, of peppermint bubble drink. Or why don't like a carbonated Nyquil? Oh, <laughs> so good. Oh, that's good. Yeah, make it taste delicious. Yeah. Start making medicine taste good. I I don't. This is probably an old wives' tale, but. I heard that Mentos was originally a medicine, was some kind of medicine, and they liked it so much they turned it into just a candy. Oh, for real? I don't. It could be a wives' tale. Where are these wives coming where are these up with wives, this stuff? Why are they such liars? <laughs> you know, yeah. why don't these they wives? get no, they get nothing but free time spreading these lies. Yeah, yeah. The men, men are out slaving away at work. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 those wives are at home get on the phone gossiping, spreading gossiping, all these rumors. Yeah, making up lies. These old wives. <laughs> mm-hmm. I wonder where that comes from, old wives' tale. Is that because of uh, some kind of thought about a woman being at home and gossiping on the phone or something? What does it come from, old wives' tale? Probably older than phones, probably. I don't know, man. Where does that expression come from? I don't use that expression. I thought, I'm stupid with expressions. I thought I thought it was nip it in the butt until like a year ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot, of people, a lot of people thought that. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's not unique. Yeah. Well, do you know <laughs> chomping at the bit? Yeah. Do you know what that is? I thought it was chomping at the butt. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I'm chomping at the bit is um, uh, the bit is the thing that the horse bites when they have that like oh, thing on there, and gotcha. they're chomping at it when they're like ready to race or something. Chomping at the bit means you're like you mm. can't I, wait to do something, right? You're chomping. I thought at it meant bit. like hungry or I don't know. Could be. Yeah. Uh, you know what's a, a phrase people kind of mix up is for all intents and purposes. They'll say all intensive purposes. Yeah, that's what yeah. I've always thought it was. All in, for all intensive purposes, mm -hmm. but all intents and purposes. Yep, yeah, that's something. I, that this is why I'm not make up a new phrase. I'm not talking a lot because of this. <laughs> Just don't talk a lot. Yeah, you're the strong silent type. Clay, yeah. what's next for Whitmer? For, for Whitmer? <laughs> for Whitmer? <laughs> uh, I think he's gonna he's gonna go from Burbank to North Hollywood, maybe, or maybe from Highland Park and then to North Hollywood, and we, I think we're gonna get dinner. Yeah. What's uh -oh. going on in North Hollywood? The, we're doing a Q and A for our movie. Where? La the Lemley North Hollywood. No, no. Oh yeah. yeah, the Arts District. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know that one. Nice. But I mean, what's what about in the future? Not just tonight. Like tomorrow. <laughs> no, like okay, this summer. Oh, this summer. You know, me and Wit are trying to make another movie, but it's taken a long time. Yeah, is it the it's same? Is the same guy gonna give you some more money, Crypto Bro? I think you no. Know, I think he's out of cash now, but oh. we're looking for another um, Crypto guy. Another guy. Another Crypto Bro. Another Crypto another. guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We need some of y'all's Crypto fans to chip in. Are you gonna make it um, the same, same S price? I think we're going up in price, and I think that's what's really getting us. How did, um, uh, how long did it take you guys to make that? We wrote it in November of 2020. We shot it in March of 2021, and we finished editing in October of 2020. So in oh. March, so the month one. of March, it took a month? No, it took, it took 12, about like 14, 12. 15 days to shoot. Okay. And um, what what are some tips that, you, that you, you've picked up? As is this your first feature? Yeah. As a first yeah. as a first time feature director on a on a sort of pretty much a shoestring budget for a feature, I guess. What are some secrets? Some secrets are this. You don't you don't really need anything. You don't need people with walkie talkies. You don't need um you don't need makeup. You don't need a um, bunch of stuff that you normally have on set. You just need about about four people behind camera. And uh, a handful of lights, and probably about four C stands. Anything that can fit in a van, um, you can, that you should do. Anything more than that, then you're just wasting time. Yeah, we got a rule. Get actors we we like had a rule going in with uh, the DP that no C stands were allowed, knowing that they would probably be like three. Well, isn't that what you put? Well, when you set up lights, do you? Is the lighting guy doing all these C stands and putting like half scrims and yeah, Hollywoods yeah. up? And you're like, no, 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 just that's put what the, they turn the light do. on. That's what they want to do. But and you, you say, don't need that. You say no, no to that. No, you say no. 
Move this by a window. Right. And I mean, we're trying to make it like it's an episode of Pound House. Right. Basically. Right. I guess we already do that. Yeah, just make a long episode of Pound House and it's a movie. Yeah. Well, that's our next... We'll just do that next. Next time we do a fundraiser, we'll just say, we'll raise the money amount. We'll get to 30. And we'll do that. We'll do it for the civil debt amount of cash. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. Right, we'll do a Pound right? movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Pound House movie. Yeah, pound we'll put you guys in it. Or it's y'all, but it's y'all, but as little kids, and it's called Pound Puppies. The pound Puppies, true beginnings of the, oh, yeah. of the Pound House origins. That's kind of a good <laughs> idea. Shoot it like when in the eighties or something. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's nineteen eighty-seven. <laughs> what are y'all doing? I was a small man, right? I was a small man. I don't know if I had a pube at that point. Yeah. Brett was probably. Well, he's mysteriously aged, so he was alive, though. Maybe he, it was. He was alive. Maybe I'm. 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 Was still looked the same th- back then. You know what I mean? Get a little salt and pepper, boy. Something. No, but it's like <laughs> it's me. You know what I mean? It's, it's just like you. you're a kid, but I'm me. You know? <laughs> it's like I, I've always kind of. Yeah. So, wit. I mean, Clay about the um, the makeup. Yeah. What? I mean, um, well, you got to find someone that looks perfect, like wit. It doesn't need the makeup, right? <laughs> Yeah, but no, I look what if bad. you got a zitty, blotchy kind of nerd? You just touch it up I yourself? I mean, if you have bad skin, then that's your character. Right. Oh, I like that. He, I mean, look, I've always kind of felt makeup is pretty unnecessary. I when do. Whenever do I've shoots. worked on stuff like that, and the, you're, the makeup, it takes forever. It's like, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't just do anything. Do it. Okay, if there's a zit, just touch it up. and right. If you want, just clear it up, mm-hmm. and we're good. But it's kind of un- you think and it's also when they do have those close ups, you could see the makeup. And right, it, like looks I all hate fake. It. No, with digital oh, cameras, yeah, yeah digital it looks works. fake too. Digital cameras and makeup and how everything's so overlit nowadays. Yeah, I hate makeup. It looks fake. It's all pointless. I I I refuse makeup. Everything I shoot, I say, um, are you okay? I'm I'm usually pass on makeup. Is that all right? The only time I, I would do makeup is if. There's a desired effect, you know, mm-hmm. like you have to I have to look a certain like a goblin or a gremlin some, or something or, or you know I'm supposed to look. Uh, dirty or something like that, uh, or whatever. And know. if you do a full frontal scene, <laughs> and they want to shave you down, do you say I prefer the bush? <laughs> my hey, wait, if I prefer if the if landing strip. Doing, if I'm me. doing nudity, then you gotta doll me up. So yeah. that's my one rule. If y'all had to do full frontal, would you beef up a little bit before you had to do it? I'd, sh- I'd ice down and I'd shrink it down. <laughs> shrink it. Yeah. Yeah. I want to go for the shocking, <laughs> smallest wiener. <laughs> You know, I want a, that shocking small wiener. <laughs> I want shocking. some like Play, you camera it? ready, perfect. Big Play, are, you, are you beefing up or icing down? <laughs> oh no, I'm do, I'm giving myself a warm tug before oh, I yeah. go up to the camera. Yeah, I'm dip myself in a warm bowl. <laughs> I want to I want to walk out proud, and that's gonna be tough. <laughs> what about you, Brent? Oh, I'm pouring boiling water over it. <gasps> you know? I want to be. It's gonna I'm, be looking actually, real swole. I'm gonna do um. <laughs> nah. I'm gonna do double Viagra's and be a call in sixty nine one one. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> 69 Nah, I just go regular, I guess, you know. Yeah, be yourself. Yeah, just be yourself. Maybe yeah. a little if there's a pimple, you know, touch it up a little bit. Give it a nice wrap. Yeah. That's nice. Get that forest green. Mm. <laughs> you ever have a pimple on your penis? No. Mm. Pimple on the penis? Penis? Pimple? There are these big sores on there though. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? All over. Me and Clay keep saying to each other like when we were at the casino last night, we go Man, oh, Clay, be like, gotta go to the bathroom, or I'll go. I gotta go to the bathroom, and Clay will go. You gonna piss out your penis? <laughs> <laughs> you gonna piss out your penis? Did you there? win any money last night? I did. Yeah, me and Clay both won. Oh yeah, me and me went did good. Well, you know. I did. I hit a six. I I had six hundred and eighty dollars on a spin. Yeah, I got it. I got it. You guys are only doing like slots. That. Yeah, dude, we yeah. used to not really be into slots. You're we, not gonna uh, sit at the felt. We used to sit at the felt, and that's how we'd play. But then a, a few times in a row, the slots just ended up... There's, like, fun little ways to play slots that is more uh, exciting, I think. Tell me about it. Tell, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> you, you. so last night we took a bunch of money that we pulled together, me, Clay, and Rod. And then we did $100 spins. And oh, yeah. we, we lost all of it, though. We call those, we call those hog bets. Yeah. And then after that, we all just went into the casino. You never g- split up. You never gamble at the same time. 
you, you watch each other gamble you watch each so other at each can... slot and support each uh-huh. other i love that um you encourage each other to stop if you win a little bit usually just bail just go to a new yeah. one mm-hmm. um, it's not gonna keep yeah yeah it's pretty rare that it does the and last time i went to yeah. a, okay continue no that's sorry. it that's all i really got. the last time i went to um a casino i actually cleared some cash i actually made some money I kept winning and winning. That's and I was weird. like doing slots as a joke. Like, well, we might as well, we're in Vegas. We might as well like yeah. play a couple of slots. And then I hit the jack, not a jackpot, but it was like ding, 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 ding. Shh, like you queens. probably get a bonus. Just, it just kept going ding, 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 just going and going. And the number kept going up. I was like, what the hell? That's sick. And then I did um, a, ru- a roulette. And then I like doubled my money on the roulette. And I'm like walking out of there. I'm like cashing out, please. How and much? I, like, and then I just did another. It paid for the hotel room and maybe another hundred bucks or something hmm. that's great it was like an you know you get those printouts mm-hmm. i think i got one for like five cents i'm like i'm cashing this in just yeah because five cents is five cents but then another one was like 90 dollars, and another one was like 75 dollars. i don't know it was like i wasn't rich but yeah for, fun. for joking around and not even trying i mean i had fun I, playing around for like an hour and then next thing you know a couple hundred bucks i i think i have I will lose all of my money, not all the money I have, but just all the money I was going to play with, and then me and Clay will spend hours just winning it back. Yeah. That's fun. That's where it gets, sometimes it gets dark, but then I, I, but then when Wit gets his money back, it feels good. Yeah. How do you get it back? That sounds like you have a gambling problem. If yeah, you probably. You do that kind of yeah, technique. Like, yeah, yeah. You've got to keep playing until till I get it back, and, and then I, you're more in the I hole. Do. Yeah, I do that. For you sure. do that, yeah. Uh, we yes. get it back. We'll play a little bit of roulette, a little bit of jack, uh, blackjack, blackjack. Um, then we'll go do some hog bets on the Casper machine at Morongo in the smoking section. What's a hog bet? Oh, that's where you pull them do together. Do like a twenty-seven. Oh, those are bet. big bets. Those are bets that you're scared to pull to for pull. one pull. Oh yeah. And is it I'm either talking... is it either gone altogether or does it give you a little like? Well, yeah, it, you got a, you mostly no, lost, 20, but you got a little. 20, put a hundred bucks in and, and play twenty-seven dollar bets. Oh. Yeah, I mean anything above fifteen dollars, we would consider that a hog bet. Yeah, hog bet, <laughs> hog bet, like a big old hog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that an Alabama thing? Oh yeah, we got the biggest hog to ever exist in mm-hmm. Alabama. Oh yeah, nine hundred pounds. Whoa. Mm-hmm. And uh, okay, yeah. Oh, why do you go to the smoking section? Because that's where the the cool people are, I guess. <laughs> That's where the cool spots are. We have there's a there's a slot called Casper that me and Wit go to because Casper plays a part in our movie, mm-hmm. and I've won big on it, and so has Wit. Yeah, I actually hit a jackpot on it. Not a big jackpot. It was like my rent, my rent for the month, hmm. and uh, I was with a bunch and, of and and Wit lives in a five story house, so you do the math. It's actually uh, yes. Yeah, uh, so I <laughs> I. I hit a jackpot and I was it was it was a pretty empty night at the casino in Morongo in the desert and um I was by myself and uh they this group of sketchy looking guys were like asking me how I won the jackpot cuz I was waiting for the casino manager to come and give me the cash cuz they had to they had to sign it something and uh then I was telling them and I was like you, I did 20 I did hog bets and they go we don't have that kind of money I say like, oh sorry man um, and then I took the cash and then they all followed me to the elevator really <laughs> and then yeah. into the parking garage and I thought for sure they were gonna like beat my ass they just kept following me and then it, I just like ran as fast as I could really <laughs> to, to my car it was like it was a pretty good amount it's like my rent Okay, that's yeah. interesting. It wasn't like sixty thousand. No, 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 no. That's interesting. They that's, followed you. That's weird. A little weird. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't even sound like it's not uh, that much money. If you in the grand scheme of a but casino. I mean, anytime somebody's getting robbed or robbing a gas station, oh. what are they getting? Like fifteen yeah, hundred exactly. bucks, make, sure. the most. I mean, it's not a bad idea because they have money, and then if you take it from it, it's your money now. Well, that's tech, it. Yeah, technically. It's not a bad idea. No, it's I'm not. Just, a bad I'm idea. just saying, just like as just an wait idea. by the elevator. Um, I think we got to wrap up this this first hour and release you so you can get to your appointments. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thanks for having. Thanks, thanks for, for having being me. here. And um, Whitmer Thomas and Clay Tatum. Thanks for the, having the me. The Civil well. Dead is out in theaters. Is it, is it going to be out next week still? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This wait, will, wait, this will come out next week. 
Also, it's going to be on VOD by then. Video on demand, maybe. Yeah, that February seventeenth. How, how do people? How do people find it there? Just Google it, probably, and and really buy it if you can. There'll also be a DVD and stuff soon. What about VHS? They are putting it out on VHS. Yeah, yeah. Really, VHS. Yeah, that's cool. Really, it? and get that stuff because that that those uh, hard goods really help out. Yeah, it's interesting that VHS is coming back. You know, I've been seeing that. People doing VHS, people having VHS collections and stuff. And you know, when y'all were talking about casinos, wit turned into a hard good. I did. <laughs> <laughs> hard That's good. true. All right. Well, thanks again. And Whitmer Thomas, anything else you'd like to plug? Check nah. out your new album. It's, it's all there. On, it's, we're going on tour, me and Clay uh, playing music in April all over the Southeast with Howdy. April 11th is when it starts. So if you live. All anywhere in Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Mississippi, Louisiana, we'll be around. Come Arkansas. Check us out. I don't know if we're going to Arkansas. Louisiana. Yeah. Biloxi. Yeah. We're gonna hit Biloxi for sure. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. That sounds like good. The Beau Rivage and Biloxi. That sounds good. That sounds like some good eating. <laughs> well, thank you again, and thank you, Clay, and we're gonna thank pe- you. we're gonna peace out. And okay. If, if you are a Patreon subscriber, you can keep listening because Brent and I are going to keep talking for another half hour, and ex- that's exclusively for the Patreon uh, l- subscribers, and that is at patreon.com slash poundcast to access that instantly. And uh, we got to quick give a quick shout-out to Aaron Brungart behind the decks back there, keeping the show alive here at All Things Comedy. And a uh, quick shout-out to Jack Birch, who is our... One of our main pimples helping out behind the scenes. And we also would like to give a quick shout out to Daniel LaVila. Daniel LaVila. Is that about it? I think so. Okay. <laughs> hey, two at crew live at the Dynasty Typewriter, March 7th. And it's going to be streaming online so everybody can buy that ticket. Everybody. Everybody buy that ticket. Peace. 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 <laughs> All right. We the same as shoes and I will hold in the scene Then a whole red may begin to come up all time I'm really feeling this great Chickens and my happy key to cold Beverly's day yet